If you think this is a lot of people, it is. I think we had 42 awards this year, and uh, it's, it's a tremendous, the, just these people alone would make a very big show. Um, We invite the people that sponsor some of these awards to come, and um, quite often they, they do, um, sometimes they don't, come to actually hand out the checks. Um, but if you look through your catalog, you'll see all of the awards listed. Uh, they're underneath the piece that got the award. They're in red, the names are in red, so don't be confused. Um, the names of the award are underneath and they're justified to the right so you can see who they are. I have some able assistants behind me. Um, one is, uh, well, some have considered her my second wife, Kat Timmermanis. She was my, my co-chair. We co-chaired Festival 86 together. And behind her is my daughter, Chris who's a, a festival brat and one of the award um, sponsors as the part of the second generation of festival award. Those are uh, who we lovingly call festival brats, the people who are now adults. Well, some aren't quite adults, but the children of people that volunteer on festival. And there are a lot of them. And we're getting to the point where we're going to be having a third generation of festival here uh, going pretty soon. But... Okay, I'm going to pass these checks over. They're in the order that I'm going to give them. So between Kat and Chris, we're going to hand them out. And when you um, hear your name called, please just step forward and they will bring you your check. Okay. The first award is a Festival Juror Award. We had three jurors. And each of them were able to give out two awards. One is a $100 award and one is a $500 award. Because we had three jurors, we decided to split. Instead of having a large award like we've had in the past at $1,000, we decided to split that and even out the awards so each of the jurors could give out the equal amount of awards. So the first festival juror award for $100 goes to Stephanie Rosales for Things I Found in the Woods. The second $100 Festival Juror Award goes to Joel Berry for Rock Painting Number 61. The third $100 Festival Juror Award goes to Emily Renkert, A Photographic Memory Number 4. We have a new award this year. Uh, about 90 or 95 percent of the photography that's in the show is now digital. One of our sponsors, uh, Paul Aslan, A Squared Studios, is a photographer who works in a dark room and he wants to encourage people to continue that. So he has sponsored a black and white dark room award for $150 and that this year goes to Christopher Bollinger for his silver gelatin print. Um, I, I don't have a name for it. And uh, this is his son, or stepson, that's accepting for him. This is not a photography award, but it, um, it actually came from uh, the family of a former photographer. It's the Dr. Eugene S. Sevensma Memorial Award. And it went to a photograph, Swan in Flight, by Randall Nyhoff. And as long as Randy is here, we're going to give him another award, which is the second generation of festival award, and that is um, 
for Double Yellow Line. Sandy Meyer, who has been up on this stage before with awards, um, she received the, or will receive here, and it's kind of an interesting story because uh, this is a memorial award in memory of my in-laws, but I don't have anything to do with it other than uh, that I'm married to one of the, the children of this couple, Elmer and Rita Zinn. It's their memorial award. And last year, uh, Sandy's piece was picked, and they picked another piece by Sandy this year, and they didn't know it was the same artist. So the Elmer and Rita Zinn Memorial Award for $100 goes to Red Squares number 6, Sandy Meyer. We have a couple of awards that people have asked to be given anonymously, and people question, well, what does that mean? Well, when you give us the money and, and you say you want it to be anonymous, we we keep it anonymous. So the next one is the ILF award for $125, and that goes to Jerry Galloway, looking up from the bottom. The Jolly Brook Award, which is a $100 award, goes to David Ninham for his 1,200 or 1,240 spools of thread piece, nude. It took me a long time to see that nude in that piece. <laughs> but if you stand back at quite a distance and squint your eyes, you get an idea. The Lewis and Margaret Vanderhave Memorial Award for $100 goes to um, the Whistling Vitesse by Marseille Ross. The LRC Limited Award, which is a committee award, is donated so that the people that are on the committee um, actually get to have some say in an award. Uh, that's one of the things when you volunteer for something, and especially an art show, and you look around, or, and you too can, can go over there and you can say, why did they pick that piece? Well, this is an opportunity for people on the committee to have some say in a piece that gets picked even though a lot of them actually are sponsors of the awards, other awards. But the LRC Limited Committee Award goes to Giovanna Nicholson for inspiration, which is that walrus piece that uh, somebody down front here voted for, uh, probably her mother. Absent tonight is the recipient of the Sam F. and Doulis Memorial Award. It's a $150 award this year. We collect money each year from friends and family of Sam. Sam was a longtime festival volunteer and just an all-around great guy. And this piece so well represented him, and it turned out that he was a longtime friend of the artist. It's Center of the Universe by Susie Logie. She's not here tonight, but give her a round of applause anyway. The Frank and Andrea Schwartz Memorial Award for $150 is given to Matisha Parmeter. Did I get that right, Matisha? No? Okay, I got it close enough, okay. Uh, for her photograph entitled Hope, one of two pieces that got awards that are entitled Hope, which caused a little bit of confusion for me along the way, so. Um, but congratulations. The Blue Heron Academy, um, Dr. Greg Lawton, uh, who owns Blue Heron Academy, has been in this show a number of times, and he wanted to give some awards to encourage um, other artists because he has received awards himself. So he has given three awards. The Blue Heron Academy Award for a work on a spiritual theme Value of $200 goes to the triptych by Bailen Lau called My Father. The Blue Heron Academy Watercolor Award goes to Sandy Meyer for Nature Revealed Number Two. You'll see a couple of people up here get a couple of awards, so. The Blue Heron 
Academy Wildlife Photography Award. And uh, Greg asked me about this. He said, can I give it to something that really doesn't have wildlife as we traditionally think of it in the, the picture? And I said, well, it's your award, Greg. You can give it to whoever <laughs> you want. So, um, but it is a wild picture. And it, the award, the Blue Heron Academy Wildlife Photography Award goes to Terry Bidgood for a slice of time. And the wildlife in there happens to be the lightning that's striking between the, uh, the rock. The Bill Peary Photography Award. Bill Peary was a local photographer who died unexpectedly a number of years ago, and friends of his have continued this award in his name. They now have shortened it from the Memorial Award to simply the Bill Peary Photography Award to encourage um, photographers and that award this year goes to Robin Portine for Cliffhanger. Robin's works don't look like photographs, and I've had more questions about whether or not they are, but they are. She, she assures us that they truly are photographs. So, um, The Salhaney Family Award is a $300 award, and it's given for a piece that's made using old technology in a new method or a new manner, new technique, um, somehow including technology. And this is, this is pretty ancient uh, technology here. Well, not so ancient to some of us because we remember it from when we were younger. But um, it goes to a cyanotype by Donald Lee Carroll, and it's entitled Orpheum Theater Interior. It's a, just an exquisite little piece. Oh, I skipped those. Okay. We have to go back. I forgot my own award here. Um, the Vinecraft Studios Award given uh, by me for my studio um, to, uh, I try to alternate every other year a three-dimensional piece or a print because I work in both medium. And that goes to uh, Bethany Caraval for her piece, it's a bronze casting entitled Gestalt. Yes. The Loma Award, which is uh, some other people that have since um, they started giving the award have become more involved with the festival. That's for uh, Lois and Matt Tomaszewicz. The Loma Award goes to Kimberly Gill I don't think, I don't see Kimberly here, so. Okay, where am I? Okay, now I have to see who's calling me here. No. Nope. Well, I'm in charge of the building over there. <laughs> um, there are three, back to the Jurors Awards, there are three $500 Jurors Awards, and those were given, like I said, by the juror, so, the first one goes to Nick Antonakis for his oil Amtrak to Chicago cranes. The second one goes to Dean Foster for his clay as clay one, two, and three porcelain. Um, the, the juror decided that she didn't, didn't want a single one of them out, so she gave them to the whole set. He got three in and, and got it for the whole thing. And the fourth one, and Ken is not here tonight, he's watching his um, daughter dance uh, in Caledonia, but the fourth one goes to Waiting, a photograph by Ken Colker. Now we get into the Purchase Awards. Purchase Awards are sponsored by people who guarantee us a certain amount of money each year to go toward the purchase of art, and then they actually buy the art. So if they decided to not buy it, we would still get the money, but that doesn't happen. So, um, The City of Grand Rapids sponsored three purchase awards this year, and the first one is Whistling Vitesse by Marseille Ross. The second one was for Waiting by Ken Kolker, and he's not here again. And the third one 
went to Sulphur Seep, Yellowstone, a photograph by William Chardon. The County of Kent also sponsored three purchase awards this year. The first one goes to Jobby, Bobby Joe Kenyon, A Little Sunshine in the Rain, a photograph. Their second award, the Kent County Purchase Award, goes to Stacy Nizwetki for In Their Loving Hands, a digital photo. And the third one, the third Kent County Purchase Award, goes to James Johnson for John Ball Duck Pond, a watercolor. Warner Norcross and Judd sponsored five awards. The first one goes through to a pastel bringing in the harvest by Mariana Huell. The Warner Norcross and Judd purchase award goes to a copper piece by Chi Hao Chung also known as Tom, entitled Wishes. The third Warner Norcross and Judd Purchase Award goes to the second piece entitled Hope. This one is by Gloria Allen and it's mixed media. Warner Norcross and Judd LLP, purchase award number four goes to Apple Beans and Oil on Canvas by Goldich Damon. Dam oh, Damien Goldich. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right on the check. Now, did you work at the firm at one time? Okay, because somebody that was there recognized you. They said, I think he worked for us at one time. So. Many years ago, you don't look old enough to have worked there many years ago, so. Um, the last Warner Norcross and Judd LLP Purchase Award is given to George Peoples for his Grand Rapids Skyline. It's an oil. And he's way down at the other end. Glenn and Betsy Borey give two purchase awards, or gave two purchase awards this year. And I am very pleased to announce that the first one goes to a Norway Maple Natural Edge Bowl, which is turned wood, and it goes to me. That was the first check I made sure was in there. And uh, I guess this is a fitting name, Bob, to, to follow up on that uh, little thing. Uh, the second Glenn and Betsy Borey Purchase Award goes to a piece of mixed media collage entitled Fertilizer by Bob Bauer. <laughs> Miller Johnson, another law firm in town, has uh, made two purchase awards. The first one goes to George Peebles, Riverside Park, another oil. The second Miller Johnson Purchase Award, and she happened to be in the gallery when this one was selected, so she got to meet the people uh, as they did it. It's a water media collage with stitching. It's entitled Matrix, and it goes to Wanda Gringheis Anderson. Jonathan and Brooke Schuff Purchase Awards. There are uh, a couple uh, who are becoming more and more active in festival. Jonathan was the artist of the poster this year. And they, had, they gave us uh, three Purchase Awards. The first one was uh, Rainy Days Acrylic by Christy Beckwith.
The second Jonathan and Brooke Shuff Purchase Award goes to Two Red Chairs, a photograph by Keith Mackey. And the third Jonathan and Brooke Shuff Purchase Award goes to Tom Sampson for his turned wood piece, Galactic Fantasy. And I don't believe Tom is here. So, the Grand Valley State University Purchase Award this year goes to Katie Button for her mixed media piece, Excavation. That was a long presentation, I know, but these people deserve some time. Even though we don't have a spotlight, they deserve some time in the spotlight. So let's give them all a big round of applause. Their, their work is well worth viewing, and if you have not yet done so, please go to the Old Art Museum and see it. Uh, thank you very much. I think next up we're going to do the Combined Theater St Scholarship Award, is that right? What are you? Oh, Philatelic, the Philatelic Awards. Well, I'm not the MC here, so nobody gave me a script. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the microphone over to the beautiful Stephanie Bergsma. Hey. You're so sweet, Fred. Well, our group isn't as large as this wonderful group, but we're still as important, I think, for sure. Well, my name is Stephanie Berksma, and I am the Philatelic Chair for Festival 2008. And I have my lovely assistant here, and her name is? Olivia Bergsma. <laughs> Olivia Bergsma. And Olivia and I are going to be presenting uh, the awards for the Philatelic Cancellation Stamp Contest. We held a contest this year um, in coordination with the post office. It was great, we had over uh, 200 enter the contest, and I know it was really difficult for the co-chairs to pick the best, um, but the best are up here with us. So I'm also pleased to have a post office representative uh, that's gonna tell us a little bit more about Philatelic and uh, to introduce our winners. And this is Garth Goodnow. The Grand Rapids Post Office has participated in the annual Arts Festival since 1970. We set up and operate an official temporary post office station at the festival each year with a unique postmark for philatelic collectors. The postmark cancellation identifies the location, date, and name of the official station. Just like regular postmarks, the cancellation is free. However, it must be applied to postage stamps affixed to something. We also sell stamps, retail products, and of course, festival attendees may drop off their regular mail for dispatch at the festival post office. The term philatelic refers to the art of collecting stamps. Postage stamps commemorate important people, places, and events in American history. Philatelists are the people that collect stamps, which are miniature commemorative pieces of art. Philatelists also collect and save special postmark cancellations. Each year, the Arts Council holds our pictorial design contest, and the winning design is featured as the official postmark cancellation for the festival. The contest brings in entries from all over West, Mich West Michigan, and many fine artists participate, so it is quite an honor to have your design selected. The Philatelic Chair for the festival, Stephanie, has done a very fine job in organizing the contest and making arrangements for the official festival postmark. Special thanks to Stephanie for her hard work and commitment to the arts and the art of stamp collecting, <laughs> otherwise known as philately. I have certificates to present to the Philatelic Design Contest winners, and Stephanie has the checks. And our first place winner is Miss Emily Strangholt. And I am modeling the uh, official cancellation here. Uh, Emily's design image was copied to create this official festival postmark. The postmark is available at the festival post office located on Ottawa, just east of here. You can also have this design printed on a t-shirt at the printmaking booth as I have. 
Second place is Mr. Elliot Bergsma. And we have a third place, Cam Southwood, who is unable to attend this evening. Uh, philatelic postmarks are collectible to both local festival goers and to philatelists across the nation. The festival design is published in the po Postal Bulletin and in philatelic publications around the world. Collectors will send their stamped cards and envelopes with a request for the postmark over the next 30 days, and you may do this also. The commemorative postmark will be available at our philatelic window at the main post office for the next 30 days. Be sure to visit the festival post office. We have some Gerald R. Ford and other commemorative articles available. So thank you. Thanks, Garth. Let's have another round of applause for our winners, Elliot and Emily. Thanks, everyone. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Uh, one more round of awards to give. My name is Gary Walker and I'm a theater volunteer, which sort of makes it sound like I should be in a 12-step program somewhere. My wife would agree. Uh, I'm here to present the Combined Theater Scholarship Awards, if I can keep my notes in order. And with me is Eric Messing, Executive Director of Broadway Grand Rapids. And, and, that, and that got applause, Eric. That's a good thing. The Combined Theater Scholarships are a unique gift from the theater community to its youngest members. They, these awards were conceived as a way to promote education and training of the next generation for community theater, as well as regional and professional theater. The scholarship started modestly as a single $500 grant. Today, we're awarding three $3,000 grants. These three scholarships are a clear message to our talented youth that education and training for the theater are essential to their personal growth and to strengthen the theater community. We live in a city with a thriving arts community, and theater is right at the top of the list. Grand Rapids Civic Theater is the fifth largest community theater in, in the country out of 7,000 community theaters with the largest educational program. Actors Theater, Community Circle Theater, Heritage Theater and Jewish Theater are all leaders in the community theater, presenting their no unique views to their diverse audiences. All these theaters have supported the scholarship this year. In addition, we're proud to have Broadway Grand Rapids participating for the first time this year. With that, I want to introduce Eric again to present the first scholarship. Thank you, Gary. The first scholarship, the 2008 Norma Brink Scholarship, uh, is awarded to Evangeline Rose Whitlock. And unfortunately, Evangeline couldn't be here uh, today. She is standing up in her sister's wedding in Ohio, who is getting married today. But I did want to share with you some of the accomplishments of Evangeline. Evangeline graduated from Calvin College in 2005 with a degree in theater. Since then, she has been working full time as the production stage manager at the Grand Rapids Ballet Company. Evangeline has been very active in the Grand Rapids theater community, working as a technical intern with Community Circle Theater and serving on the board of directors for Heritage Theater Group. In the last five years, Evangeline has served as stage manager on more than a dozen community and collegiate shows. Evangeline is also an accomplished figure skater and is a current member of the U.S. Figure Skating Association. Her talent on the ice has led Evangeline up to serve as choreographer on 20 area productions since 2002. Perhaps most notably to Evangeline herself is her involvement with Actors Theater production of Seven Passages, The Stories of Gay Christians. Evangeline wrote in her application, I dealt with a subject matter that challenged me both in my personal beliefs and in my process as a stage manager. By conduction and transcribing interviews, editing the script, and stage managing the production, I learned how to look through somebody else's eyes and empathize with the other in our society. I came to understand that my role as a stage manager is an integral, driving, and unifying force behind the amazing capacity that theater has to inform and to transform. In order to achieve her goals as a professional stage manager and instructor, in the fall she will begin classes at the University of California, San Diego. It is a three-year MFA program where she will be doing professional work with the Old Globe Theater. 
Evangeline Rose Whitlock is a very deserving recipient of the 2008 Norma Brink Scholarship. Uh, the David and Emma Nicolette Combined Theater Scholarship is named for longtime Grand Rapids Press critic David Nicolette and his wife. Dave was more than simply a critic, however. He was always there to support our theater community and with his sharp insight and his personal support. This year's recipient of the Nicolette Scholarship is Brian Martin. Uh, for such a young man, Brian's resume is too long to present. He's acted, crewed, and worked in every aspect of community theater in Grand Rapids. He is graduating from Rogers High School and his experience there sums up Brian's commitment to theater. When he was a freshman, he discovered that there was no one willing to direct the school musical. So Brian recruited friends from the community to direct the show each year as well as recruiting students to perform and providing technical support for the performance in the, excuse me, in the process. Brian led to the revitalization of the theater program at Rogers High School. Page two. Brian's passion for theater permeates his life. From his range of training to his involvement in all levels of theater, he exemplifies the strength of our theater community. Brian will be continuing his formal education in musical theater at Western Michigan University. I'm proud to present the Nicolette Scholarship to the title character of my first show, <laughs> Velveteen Rabbit. I'm enjoying And as they say, the check's in the mail. <laughs> you will get it. And I'm honored to present the 2008 Grand Award Scholarship to Lori Valdir. And Lori is actually performing in Kansas City, and so I'm happy to present it to her mother, Wendy Valdir, who's here in Lori's place. Lori is, the, is a 2004 graduate of Grand Rapids Christian High School, attended Point Park University before transferring to Penn State University, where she is currently pursuing her BFA in musical theater. Since 2000, Lori has been involved in 25 productions. Locally, Lori has appeared in eight shows with Grand Rapids Civic Theater, including uh, performing as Dorothy in the 2000 production of The Wizard of Oz and Wendy in the 2001 production of Peter Pan in addition to performing with Actors Theater, Community Circle Theater, and Jewish Theater Grand Rapids. Lori has had a very successful professional acting career, having performed in multiple productions with Hope Summer Repertory Theater, the Red Barn Playhouse, the Pittsburgh Playhouse, Forestburg Playhouse, and most recently with Penn State University. Currently, as I mentioned before, as we speak, Lori is rehearsing as a member of the Summer Stock Company of the Music Theater of Wichita, Kansas. Most significant to Lori herself in her respectable professional resume is her involvement in the National Broadway Tour of Hairspray, where she was a member of the ensemble, taking a year off of school to tour and share her homegrown, homegrown talents with the nation. Lori's goal after she finishes her collegiate training is to get on Broadway as soon as she possibly can. I spoke with Lori on the phone yesterday while she was on a rehearsal break, and she couldn't reiterate enough how significant a role the Grand Rapids theater community played in her personal and professional development, and how proud she is to be a product of this community, which was so instrumental for her in becoming the person who she is today. I am extremely honored to announce that Lori Valdir is the 2008 recipient of the Grand Award Scholarship. All right, well, thank you. That concludes the awards for now.